All right, guys, we are cruising in Chris's 1990 hatch. His mom's old uh, Fox body from California. And this car's been in the family for quite a long time. Hence Chris's sentimental attachment to it and why he wanted to put in some time and money to get this car back to its former glory. And this was a really nice, clean, tidy little car when he first dropped it off. And if you guys haven't checked out those videos, make sure that you do. Kick things into overdrive here. As I'm just going for the final little cruise, as I just did a final little adjustment to the suspension in the front to dial things in. I wanted to make sure that steering wheel was 100% straight, which it is. The car's driving straight, air's blowing cold, and I know we usually do the drive-ins after we've started the video off, but whatever. It's sometimes a good thing to change things up. But that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to uh, just do a little circle up here, get down to the cul-de-sac down by the shop, and then uh, we'll go over the car and its final outcome here. This car will get down. Let's blow the carbon out of it. No rattles. Guys, this car was a rattle trap when Chris first brought it to me. Whoever had taken the dash out before, most likely to do the heater core at some point, they like broke so much in the back and well we got that all fixed and i do not even hear a rattle in here and we are in an lx hatch believe it or not so anyways we're pulling up to the spot here what's up guys and welcome back to the infamous project we are finally here revealing chris's 1990 lx hatch their survivor car if you guys remember, Chris dropped this off a number of months ago for a complete mini restoration, which involved regasketing, cleaning up the motor, complete paint and body, trim resto, got into some wheels and tires, even four wheel disc brakes. So a little bit of everything to pay tribute to his mom's old LX hatch, clean, super, and I mean like not a spot of rust anywhere on this car. Originally a California car, so well kept, well preserved, and a perfect foundation to build off of. And most importantly, to invest the time and money into, right? To make this thing back to the way that it was, if not maybe even a little bit better. So this is pretty much the run of the mill mini restos that I like to do here and there. Not like some complete crazy build, but the car was completely stripped down and apart. Quarter glass was taken out. All of the trim was removed. The motor was taken out, so on and so forth. So that, that way we could treat the paint job like a color change. Now the number one obstacle in this project, unfortunately, was something that we've all suffered from if we've built a car. Now, some of you guys might actually be suffering from this right now, and that is actually body shop jail. That's right. Unfortunately, as much as I love Red Dog and his work, well, sometimes personal and professional things happen, and it's just not everyone's year. And unfortunately, there was a couple delays with the car. But with that said, good things come to those who wait. And one really important thing, guys, that I want to stress is that communication is key. And... I knew that there was some delays that were happening with the painter and I made sure to relay the information to my customer and let them know and said, listen, man, I know I told you this in terms of timelines, but the reality is going to be the following. So customer completely super cool. The reality was it was the mid of Texas heat in the summer and well, the car is done now for perfect cruising Texas fall weather. So. Let's go over the car.
can see here, we have complete paint, right? And this is an original black molding car, being a 90. And this is the original color to the car, which I was actually surprised in how much metallic actually came back to life once we got rid of all of that faded and dull paint that was on here. And Red Dog, although maybe took his time in terms of getting the car back, the car looks really, really, really nice. And there was a couple little bumps and bruises on the bumpers, uh, rear quarter panel, we had door dings, and a couple little bumps in the fenders. This front bumper cover actually was in pretty bad shape because something had actually hit this corner before at one point and I actually had to re uh, replace the crash bar behind because that fiberglass panel was all cracked and busted up in the back. So I know you guys, I think this is a YF paint code car. It is YF and doors open and close great. We uh, did the door pins on this side, the door pins on the passenger side were okay. Redid all the striker bushings and again, all of that trim and did the quarter window moldings and everything looks just fabulous. So let's take a look at the interior here. And again, just went over everything. We got new map bag pockets from TMI. The speaker grills were cracked down where the screw is and, um, you know, out of the, um, the, the clips that go through the door panels themselves were busted. So we got new speaker grill covers, brand new window switches, lock switches, and the face plates there from Alomar. I rewrapped the inserts, this being a 90. So these had tweed coverings on the inner panels here. So I wrapped these with vinyl off of Amazon. And Chris actually got these TMI seat covers and had someone down local to him install the covers with new foam. And these turned out really, really nice. Like in terms of an aftermarket seat cover and wanting to look like factory, this actually looks great. I'm really, really impressed with the uh, the outcome of these, and of course you can see this is probably more of a leather, or this is more probably like a vinyl versus the uh, leather on the inside, but really nice texture, really nice finish. The cup holder was already installed in the car when it was here, but stuff like the rubber boot was uh, not in the greatest shape, so fix stuff like that and new headlight switch. This was all faded out. We needed to do a new cluster cover because whoever had taken this dash out at some point had no idea what they were doing. I think somebody tried to do LEDs in the gauge cluster at one point as well. Guys, they had a screw that was going through the cover and down into the cluster itself. It was about yay long, and that was the only thing that was sort of somewhat holding this on. And now, all of the proper hardware is holding this on. The dash is bolted in the way that it should be. We did the kill mat tips and tricks to reduce and mitigate rattles wherever we could. Got the Todd Lane Bluetooth radio head unit integration done. So now, Chris can stream Bluetooth from his phone on the factory radio. Did full speaker upgrade in the dash doors and in the rear plastics. The old pile audio um, speaker upgrade, which, you know, for under a hundred bucks, you're upgrading all the speakers in your Fox. And for what they are, they actually sound not too bad off that factory head unit. So aside from all that, let's take a look underneath the hood and we'll talk about the engine and the engine bay. All right, guys, so let's have a quick look at the engine bay here. Came out really, really nice. In my opinion, probably a little bit nicer than factory. And that's because we actually pulled the motor out in order to get paint in the bay when the car got sent off to paint. So the transmission stayed in the car, but the motor was pulled out. Of course, all of the surrounding components and everything else on the inner aprons were removed so that that way we could get paint where the factory did not. So while everything was apart, it gave an opportunity to completely clean and detail the motor up. You can see the intake manifold looks almost as good as new. Ended up putting a Holley 65 millimeter throttle body on and also a set of shorty unequal length headers. 
and a Culber style brake booster because we did end up putting rear disc on the car. So we wanted to be able to, well, boost the pressure for the four wheel disc brakes. So you can see we got our Fox body brakes proportioning valve right there and anything that could have been upgraded or cleaned up or gasketed or painted has been done with the exception of the radiator that he had in the car that just got cleaned. But things like new terminals, uh, coil cover, we ended up opting for a wiper motor cover, right? Just to kind of clean things up. Had an original spark plug wire slash distributor cover boot thingamadoo there. So I ended up putting that on. Of course, we got brand new stickers to kind of give the look and the feel in the bay. And then we just kind of got the wires off of the top side of the strut towers and routed them down and around, kind of the poor man's wire tuck, if you will. But the bay turned out really, really nice. Of course, we got paint on the complete underside of the hood here because the liner, well, we all know how the liners go. So at least the hood is one solid color. So that looks really good. And 3G alternator, that was already done prior to me getting my hands on the car. And we did end up converting the car to 134. Um, the 112 was just, it was still working. It was still blowing, just not as cold as it should be on those really hot days. So we ended up going to 134. That's why the AC compressor, that is old and true to the car. Well, other than that, on the outside, the biggest visual change are the 18 inch reimagined Cobra Classics. So we had to do a poor man's five bolt conversion here. So we just did Lincoln rotors in the front. We did axles in the rear and we ended up actually doing disc brakes in the back. Chris wanted to get away from the look of drums and get a little bit more pedal out of the car. So we used the kit from Fox Body Brakes back there and that all turned out really, really nice. Of course, they give you every last little bit that you need uh, because it's nice when you get everything from your e-brake cables and every the shims that you need and everything that's required in one kit, it really makes things easy and straightforward. Um, Flowmaster, we got some uh, polished tailpipes on there now. The angle is, it's a little aggressive. Chris said that he was fine with it. What happened there is, I don't know if you guys could remember, the car actually had like these black tailpipes coming out the back and they just, they look like shit. They really did. And the way that the tailpipe section on that cat back came out versus the way the Flowmaster tips um, do just resulted in that little bit of a rake. And I don't think it's the end of the world, maybe a little aggressive, if you will, but whatever. Chris is happy, so I'm happy. Um, all new lights, right? So uh, new taillight lenses in the back. Uh, the front, he had a pretty new set. So what we did was we scuffed those down and re-cleared them. Um, so that, that way they got UV protection on them and they won't yellow and they'll stay looking the part for a long time. Brand new Ford emblems on here. And that's pretty much it, guys. Lots of work, lots of time, lots of effort, but definitely worth it. This is a beautiful car. I'm hoping that Chris is really gonna enjoy it for years to come. They live down in beautiful hill country of Texas, and I'm sure they're gonna enjoy cruising this thing on weekends down to the wineries or the breweries, distilleries, and everything else that uh, hill country's got to offer down there. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the reveal video of this 19 LX hatch, AKA the Survivor. And as always, thank you guys for your support, and we'll see you here next time on The Infamous Project.